Okay, this one here, I wanted to go over this. This is a reversing valve on this heat pump that has stuck. And I want to show you the symptoms of it. And, well, let's just start out with what it should do. When I start it up and I get a pressure difference, because this valve operates on pressure difference, uh, it should shift and it makes a whoosh whoosh noise. Well, uh, it's not doing that. Now, I'm going to start it up in a minute, but one of the things I want you to note is you look down here, it's just barely got any refrigerant in it at all. Because my pressure is, uh, you know, 32 and uh, it's about 75 degrees outside, so it's not even that saturated. So uh, this thing's just barely got any charge in it. Okay, right now I do not have the jumper on here. I've got a jumper here, and uh, when I put the wire on there after the pressure has uh, come up to the uh, pressure differential it should have, then it should shift. So let's see what it does. Okay, compressor's running. You notice we immediately go way up on the head pressure. That's way out of hand. It's like it's almost blocked off. You see I'm tapped right here, right at the discharge. And uh, the other hose is hooked up right here in the suction so I'm getting an actual suction at the compressor and discharge the compressor. Now I'm running run about 275 on the head, uh, 20 on the low side. Now I'm going to go ahead and hook this up. You can hear it energized but nothing's happened. So the valve is not moving you can hear the solenoid move the pilot, but the main valve is not working. Now I'm going to do some pressure or some temperature checks on this thing uh, to see what's actually happening in the line. Okay, now I put temperature probes. One's right here in the discharge, and uh, this should be in cooling. So this line right here is going to the outdoor coil and it should be hot gas also. It should be the temperature of this line and the temperature of this line should be, depending on whose uh, uh, reversing valve manufacturer you're talking to, no different than 3 to 6 degrees. So if I had 100 degrees here, I should have no more than say 94 degrees there. There will be some drop across that valve, but not very much. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this up and let's see what happens. Now, of course, you can see that head pressure went immediately out of hand. And this is my discharge temperature right here. Climbing pretty fast, but you notice the uh, hot gas line going to the outdoor coil is not very hot. And if anything, it might be getting a little cooler. It's actually dropping a little bit. See, I'm 151 and I'm at, well, essentially 88. Uh, so where is that heat going? Well, I'm going to change the position of this uh, one of these probes and we'll take a look. Okay, now I put, I've put i left this one here on the discharge line. I put this in, in the center one for the reversing valve. This should always be suction. This should always be cool or if it's like it is low charge at all, it should be about ambient temperature. So let's see what happens now. I'm going to fire this up again. Okay, you can see your head immediately go up. And this is a discharge coming off the compressor. 
and this is the suction line. Now the suction line should be, if anything, about 75 degrees or maybe a little cooler. Remember, I have very little charge in this thing. Uh, I probably don't have half a pound in this thing. And yet my head pressure is 280. Uh, suction pressure is higher than it should be with the amount of charge that's in it, but uh, uh, it's still low. Now, my T2, that's this one right here, that's the one that should be cold. I'm at 108, and I'm at 170 on my uh, discharge. So I'm leaking across from the discharge which is going down the bottom of that valve, I'm leaking across to here, so this valve is part way in between. That's my issue. Now, one other thing I'll note while we're doing this, I'm gonna shut this off now, and I want you to watch the pressures. Okay, we're off. Now you notice it equalized very quickly. It should not have equalized that fast. It equalized quickly because I'm getting a uh, hot gas going straight into the valve and instead of going here or here if it was in heat, it's going here which is going right back to the compressor because that's a suction line going into the accumulator. If I put my temperature probe on the suction line I'll get about the same temperature as I got right here. Pretty close to the same thing, probably a little bit lower. So uh, quick equalization. Uh, a temperature much too high for here. Uh, we even have a pretty high uh, discharge temperature. The reason that discharge temperature is so high is because it's recycling back into the compressor. So essentially I'm having refrigerant come out of here, go through the valve, come straight back to the compressor. And uh, it actually took a, a compressor out of this thing and I've replaced the compressor because you can't tell if a reversing valve is bad when the compressor is bad. There's no way to tell because you have to have pressure difference to get this thing to operate. So uh, when I put the new compressor in it, I know it doesn't look new, something laying around that I had. Uh, and now we find out we've got a reversing valve failure. So, that's a reversing valve. No whoosh whoosh means the reversing valve isn't working. As long as you have, you can hear this, that means that solenoid is actually energizing and moving but the valve itself is not changing position. So we got a toast reversing valve.